You're right, guys. This is another Brony Dan Talks Doctor Who. Now, I think for this uh, video, I thought I would set myself a little bit of a challenge in reviewing Doctor Who stories. And that challenge would be that I would look at every single story in season 16, which is basically Doctor Who's first, I guess you could say, proper season-long arc, which is, of course, the key to time season. Now, f the reason why I'm doing this is because it's just a bit of fun, and, you know, i got to admit, I'm actually quite uh, fond of season 16 as a whole, basically. Now, for the reasons for why uh, this is a season-long story arc, basically, it's mainly because... Graham Williams, who was uh, producer at this point, he had just felt that, you know, Doctor Who would become a bit repetitive and a bit boring in a way because, like, he would just arrive at a planet, fix it, and then go again. And it was like, like, he didn't like the idea of the Doctor just being another character who just jumps around and not having a purpose for anything. So... Basically, he decided, right, we're going to give him a purpose, we'll create these beings called the Guardians, you know, the White Guardian and the Black Guardian, and we'll make give them a higher purpose than the Time Lords ever had, and we can have them send the Doctor off to look for these six segments of the Key to Time, which, you know, controls, which sort of, like... It controls the sort of the balance of the universe, basically. We'll get the Doctor to search for them. Every story will be about finding the segment to the key. We'll give him a new companion, which of course is uh, Romana. And we'll just see what we can make of that. So that's basically why this arc exists. And I think, honestly, I think it, it was a... It was a good attempt. I quite like what they did, I, 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 and I like some of the stories that they came up with. So, basically, we what better way to start than by looking at the very first story in the arc, which is, of course, the Reboss Operation. So, the Reboss Operation is, as, as I just said, it's the first story to look in searching for the key to time, and in this, like... In this story, the Doctor and Romana and K-9 at this point, uh, they are sent to the planet Reboss to search for the first segment, and they get involved in a, um, there's like a, um, I saw that, that there's a, a trading or a set, or like a, a seller on the planet, Garen and his assistant Unstoff, they're planning to sell the planet Reboss to this exiled tyrant called the Graf Vindicke, and basically the Doctor is mainly, he's just there to try and get the segment and get off the planet, but there's also a, there's also some, um, so struggles in a way because they've, because they believe that the planet Reboss is, is a source for this mineral called uh, Jeffrick, which is said to be one of the most, is one of the rarest and most powerful minerals in the universe. And basically, the whole point is, is again, get the key to time, basically, and to sort of try and figure out why Garen is, wants to sell the planet, you know, what does the Jeffrick have to do with any of this? And it's, and again, it's a fun story. Like, there isn't, like, like I said, there isn't a, a lot in a way of a, of like a strong story, but it's just fun watching the characters interacting with each other. And I think that's the, what I say is the big highlight for the Reboss Operation, is uh, the characters in it. I think a lot of people tend to forget that Robert Holmes wrote this story, because, uh, for those of you who don't know, Robert Holmes is regarded as the best writer that Doctor Who ever had. He wrote a lot of the classics like uh, Spearhead from Space, Terror of the Autons, uh, like, you know, and uh, 
Time Warrior, uh, Talons of Wen Chiang, Ark in Space, uh, Pyramids of Mars, all the, like, I think all the classics that we consider as Doctor Who, he had a hand in it, or they came out during his time when he was script editor. And I honestly do think the Reboss Operation is probably his most underrated story. Mainly because of the fact that, you know, one of the traits of <coughs> of a Bob Holmes story is, like, the uh, double acts. Bob really liked having two, sep two characters who just bond together and they get involved in the scripts and everything. And, and, and you see, like, a pattern of that in a lot of his uh, stories. Like, obviously, we've got uh, Jago and Lightfoot in Talons of Wang Chiang. Uh, Castle and Spandrel and Engin in The Deadly Assassin. And in this one, we've got, uh, I think you say we've got two uh, double acts. Like, obviously, we've got uh, Garen and his assistant Unstoff, who are just, like, they're, they're funny. I, I enjoy the chemistry between them. But you've also got the Graf in Decay and his, I guess you could say, his sort of lieutenant, second in command, uh, Sh like Shellac, and I think again they, every single character works well with each other, and I think I I don't think the Graf Vindicay I think is one of the funniest uh, villains that I think from this era they came up with because he is so it's so he's so over the top with his uh, wanting to get power again. That he is just an absolute joy to watch into, especially towards the end when, you know, he literally just goes mad and he's just raving and shouting at pretty much nobody, basically, because he's so blinded by, you know, of, like, nostalgia, of, like, of like all these battles he's fought in, and he literally just goes off and blows up, and there's no, there's no better way to go out, I think. There is another character that I think we need to talk about, and that is uh, Binro the Heretic. Um, I just love uh, Binro. Binro's lovely. I think he, he's such a sweet little character, and I love uh, the scene between. Uh, I think the scene between him and Unstoff in the like, like in in his little den and in the catacombs of Rebos. It's such a it's such a lovely scene, and you do, and like, you do feel sorry for him, and you do just love him, and, and it is a shame that he dies, basically, and again, and, and the actor, I think, does a brilliant job of playing him, and it, it's a warm, it's a warm feeling when, just the fact that when Unstoff, you know, is there, and he does actually say to him, look, I you know, you're saying all these things about how, you know, the lights in the sky are actually stars and other planets and that Rebos is part of another system and there are hundreds of others like it. Well, I can confirm that that is all true. I am from another planet and all that. And you just see the, the joy in Binro's face when he says all these things. And just that final line of, in that scene where Unzov just says, in a hundred years from now, Everyone will look back and say Binro was right. Oh, it just warms me up just seeing him. And like again, I I do wish Binro, like if he had la if he had actually survived the story, I think he would have absolutely he would have been he was an absolute joy to watch. I also think that Mary Tam is very underappreciated as Romana because. You know, whenever we tend to think about Romana, it's always, we always go to Lala Ward. And again, I love Lala Ward. I think she and Tom Baker had excellent chemistry. But then again, so did Mary and Tom. And again, I do, and again, it is a shame that she doesn't get as much recognition for it that I think she deserved. And again, and it's a shame as well that she's no longer with us. And, but like, again, I, I like, th it's a different portrayal from what Lala did, because obviously uh, Mary Tam's portrayal of Romana is very different. She's often, 
like she was promised a character who was sort of like an ice prince, this sort of ice maiden sort of character. She's very cold, very calculative. She's just, you know, like like she's just graduated from the Time Lord Academy, so she's looking at everything from mainly from book learning, and 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 it's it it was a really interesting idea that she learns that you know not everything is set up how it is in the books and how you know everything is different from what you would expect and while I don't think they do a lot with that for her I still I still like her character throughout this arc and she does like I do get the feeling that she does you do get the that she does lighten up a little bit especially when she's around Tom who I think obviously by this point this is his fifth year in the role and I kind of feel like he needed somebody like Mary to sort of pass out. Because I think a lot of people have actually kind of said that, you know, by the time you got to season 16, Tom, he's starting to look a bit... Well, I wouldn't say he's looking tired, but you do get the sense that he's like, okay, I've, I've been doing this now for five years now, I'm just going with the flow. But at the same time, he's still... Absolutely a jo funny to watch. He has some, you know, absolutely brilliant scenes. Like, I love, like, the or the first bit in episode three when uh, the graph in Decay does the whole glove slap and Tom just responds just to pick up the glove and slap him back with no facial expression whatsoever. It's, he's abs it's absolutely funny. And I think, again, this is sort of where I think you get the humour just right in a story like this. The humour and the story and everything, it just balances out right. Even though there isn't a lot in the, st there isn't a lot in the story, I think the humour in this one does sort of le help to level it out a little bit. And it, and I also think it's an enjoyable story and I, I like the, um, like, I, I, I think it's a good way to, to introduce this idea of the arc that we're going to be going on and obviously I think for spoiler warnings, in case you actually want to see the story, I'm not going to explain what the segment is because the black, the white guardian explains at the beginning of the story that all the segments are are hidden and they're all disguised as different objects. So, for that, just for the sake of you know keeping it a surprise as much as as, as I possibly can, I won't be saying exactly what the segments are disguised as if I can help it. I think later on I probably won't be able to, but that would be just for the sake of the story. So I think you can probably tell what story I'm going to be talking about, where I'm going to need to say what the segment is. And yeah, that's all I can really say for the Reboss Operation. I think it's a a very underrated story in my opinion, and, and it's a great introduction to season 16. It's a good introduction to Romana and her character. I liked uh, like the different double acts we had in this story. And, you know, we did get a little bit of a more introduction into the universe in a way, where introducing the characters that are beyond the Time Lords with the Guardians, which obviously with New Who, they tend to completely ignore that the Guardians ever existed so that, so that the Doctor can be the ultimate being of the universe and everything, and everything revolves around the Doctor, and yeah, I fucking hated that in the new series, and, that, and again, the Timeless Child sucks. I'm sorry I'm bringing that up again, but it's one of those things where you just like, you had a good basis with the Guardians and even like the Eternals in... Uh, what was it? Enlightenment. You had characters who could, who were quite these beings that were bigger than Time Lords, and yet you completely disregard them just so you can make the Doctor basically Space Jesus. And that annoys me. So, uh, yeah, basically we have a good story with the Reboss operation. I like it. I'm not really sure what anyone else is thought on it, because again, Reboss, and I think most of season 16, is one of those seasons where the general consensus is is very faded on what people think of this season and this 
story. Like, I know with some stories, you could say, oh, that story's an absolute classic, or, well, that one's garbage. Whereas, something like the Reboss Operation, I don't think anybody talks about it as much. Which is a shame, because I do honestly think it needs to be talked about more. And I think this season needs to be appreciated more for what it tried, what it, what it did. And, yeah, that's it. I like Reboss Operation. It's a good story and everything. It's great. I, I love it. Basically. And so, yeah, that's it for uh, this story. Join in next time where we take a look at the next story in Season 16. A rather interesting story for a lot of reasons. And that is, of course, will be the Pirate Planet. So, yeah, see you then for that one.